Hi, this video is for CE410 or hydraulic. So in this video, we're gonna be solving a problem regarding orifice. So for the those who didn't watch my video or my lecture about orifice, kindly watch my lecture and I will put my lecture on the description below. Let's go! So this is the problem. Problem number one, determine the discharge or the flow rate at the orifice on the tank shown. So the tank is already shown here. So as you can see that the tank is not closed and the water surface is exposed to the atmosphere or to air. So if the head of water is maintained at 4.5 meters, so it is already shown also in the figure that the head or the height of the water from the orifice up to the liquid surface or the water surface is 4.5 meters. The diameter of the orifice is 40 millimeters. So it means that the orifice is circular in shape because the given here is diameter and uh, C or the coefficient of discharge is 0. Point. Let's go! So to explain further the problem, there is a given tank here. So the tank or the reservoir is filled with water and water is being discharged here at the orifice. Now, if we try to look at the head, that is 4.5 meters and it is being maintained. So if we are discharging water at that particular tank or a reservoir and water is being maintained at 4.5 meters, then we assume that there is a continuous supply. It is not directly given in this kind of problems that there is a continuous supply, but they always say that water is being maintained at a certain level. Now, if there is a continuous supply and this height is being maintained, then theoretically, flow rate here or the discharge will remain constant. So if the flow rate or Q or the discharge is constant over time, then that type of flow is what we call the steady flow. So in the first few problems that we're going to be solving here in my videos, we're going to be solving steady flow on orifice. Let's go! So let's solve the problem. So for this problem, the required is the flow rate or the discharge. Now, uh, students will ask, sir, is that the theoretical discharge or the actual discharge? So for me, uh, let's try to look at the given. So now, as you can see, C is already given. So what's the reason on not solving actual discharge? So if C is given, then solve for the actual discharge. And if C or the coefficient of discharge is not given, so how can we solve the actual discharge? So the only flow that we can compute if C is not given is theoretical discharge. So the required is the discharge. So let's say that's Q sub A. Let's go! So let's solve the problem. So we're gonna be having two solutions here. So for the first solution or solution number one, we're gonna be using the basic concept of Bernoulli's energy equation. And since there are no head losses given in the problem, so we assume that the system is ideal. So for an ideal system, our working equation is E sub 1 equals E sub 2. Now, let's set the points. Now, first point is at the liquid surface, point 1. And the second point could be here at the orifice since we need to determine the Q or the discharge at the orifice. So let's set that as point 2. Also, the datum line is also set at the level of the orifice. So now, let's try to determine the energy heads involved at points 1 and 2. So 
at point 1 since this is an open reservoir then we do not consider velocity head and since this is exposed to the atmosphere and there is no gauge pressure being input in the system so we also neglect pressure head and since the level of this liquid surface is at 4.5 meters now we consider elevation head next here at the orifice so let's consider this orifice as a pipe opening so now if this is some kind of pipe opening we now consider velocity head and since we consider point 2 here at the jet there is no gauge pressure when water is being discharged outside of the reservoir and all energies will be converted into velocity and discharge and since the datum line is at the level of the orifice then z sub 2 is already zero let's go so expanding the equation let's try to look again here so the only energy head involved here is z sub 1 equals velocity head at point 2 so that's v sub 2 square over 2g now since we are computing for the discharge we need to determine v sub 2 or the theoretical velocity at point 2 so that's v sub 2 square is equal to 2gz so let's exponentiate both sides by one half or let's square both sides of the equation and v sub 2 is equal to the square root of 2g z sub 1 so upon substituting the values the value of the theoretical velocity is the square root of 2 times the acceleration due to gravity that's 9.81 times z sub 1 so z sub 1 is 4.5 meters so that's 4.5 meters so what would be the value of the theoretical velocity so let's try to input that in the calculator so that's the square root of 2 times 9.81 times 4.5 so that is uh -huh. so the velocity is 9.3968 meters per second so this is the velocity at the orifice now since we want to determine the actual discharge this is not the final answer so we temporarily store this value at a in order for us to have convenience if we want to use it again now what is the formula for q or discharge for actual discharge that's q sub a equals the coefficient of discharge c times theoretical discharge so q sub b from our derivation that's the area of the opening times theoretical velocity so q sub a is equal to c times a or the area of the opening times theoretical velocity so expanding further that's q sub a is equal to c so since the cross-sectional area of the opening is for circle we're using the formula pi b square over 4 times v sub t so upon substituting C is 0 0.8 so that's 0 0.8 times pi times d 
So the diameter is 40 millimeters. So that's also equal to 0 0.04 meters. So that's pi times 0 0.04 square over 4 times the value of B sub T. So we substitute the stored value at A. So going back to the calculator, Q sub A or actual discharge is that's 0 0.8 times oops, sorry, that's the quantity of pi times 0 0.04 square over 4 times oops sorry times the stored value at a so we press alpha a that's equal to so the actual discharge is a very low value that's Q sub A is equal to 9.4461 times 10 to the negative 3. So our unit would be cubic meters per second. So this is the actual discharge for this problem. So that's 9.4461. 1 times 10 to the negative 3 cubic meters per second. Let's go! So for our second solution, or solution number 2, we're gonna be using the derived formula for our past discussion. So, the formula would be Q sub A is equal to C times the cross-sectional area of the opening of the orifice times the square root of 2G uppercase H. So take note that the uppercase H always depends on the existing energy in the system or in the scenario. So in this case, uppercase H or the only energy that triggers the discharge here at the orifice is only the height of the water. So there is no input gauge pressure and there is no velocity of approach. So now we substitute the values. So, Q sub A or actual discharge is equal to 0 0.8 times the cross-sectional area of the orifice opening. So, that's pi B square. So, pi times the diameter is 0 0.04 square over 4 times the square root of 2 times 9.81 times 4.5 so what would be the actual discharge here at solution number 2 so that's 0 0.8 times the quantity of pi that's shift times 0 0.04 square over 4 times so times the square root of 2 times the acceleration due to gravity when SI that's 9.81 times 4.5 so the discharge here is also the same so that's 9.4461 times 10 to the negative 3. So our unit would be cubic meters per second.
So as you can see, the answer from solution number one is accidentally the same with the answer at solution number two. So either which, if you want to use Bernoulli's energy equation, well, that's okay. So if you want to shorten your solution, you can use the derived formula. Q sub A is equal to C times A sub O times the square root of 2GH. Let's go! So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something and see you on my next videos.